rolling into it. My name's Dio Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast, and we're coming to you live from the top eight of the Veteran Flight Club Championship. If you're not familiar with a Flight Club Championship series, we'll talk about it in a minute because there's a good chance that these guys might be getting into it real quick. Never mind, he's turning away. I can talk about it. <laughs> The Flight Club Championship Series takes qualifying events and uh, depending on how people did, assigns them a rank and each of those ranks, recruit, veteran, and ace, have their own championship event with championship level prizes available for each level. It was something really important to me to allow players of every skill level to have a chance at some of that top swag. Now, Going into it right now, we have two absolute meta staples. We haven't had a chance to see this type of matchup, or at least not very often, where, I mean, five Inquisitors, two Fire Sprays, two of the best ones that you can fly right now, really, really good. James is going to break them down here in a minute. I'm going to open up to choose your champion. Actually, I'm going to have to pay out the bets from last time. Uh, the winner was, I forgot, was it player one or player two? <laughs> player one. Classic. Classic Dion. We'll go ahead and do that. Well, I'll open up the Choose Your Champion uh, poll in about 30 seconds, letting the robot distribute the points. But James, go ahead and break down those lists for us. All right. So Nicholas God uh, bring in the five sight, five inquisitors with foresight, uh, being able to get bonus attacks, uh, free mods if you are in the bullseye, attacking in the bullseye. Uh, so kind of kind of the meta monster right now, uh, wreaking wreaking a lot of havoc. So we'll see how they get on against the other meta monster right now, with Zam Django coming from Ernestus Romanescus. <clears throat> He's flying Django Fit in the Separatist Fire Spray, uh, and he has on board. He has Treacherous, allowing allowing him to cancel hits. And crits, if they're shooting through another ship. Count Dooku, giving him that force charge and allowing him to modify dice results in a very unique way. Thermal detonators, false transponder codes, and a hull upgrade. So, let me make a little bit more tanky. He also has a buddy with him, Zam Wessel. Also has treacherous, also has thermal detonators, also has false transponder codes, also has hull upgrade. And she is sporting the Slave 1 title, the Separatist Slave 1 title, and the Suppressive Gunner upgrade uh, that using that gunner slot added by the Slave 1. So uh, the, you see these Inquisitors coming in hot, uh, setting up those foresights to possibly trigger onto Zam here. Yeah, I mean the the plays, and here we go. Here is the uh, the the execute maneuver first. They'll likely check um, the there you go that center one first, and this happens before Zam gets to take an action. Yeah, spending a force to perform this attack. One single crit. Uh, this takes away the bonus. Excuse me, the um, range bonus. Yeah, does so trigger. You should thank three. me. And we'll find out, did uh, did yellow measure yet? Excuse me, not yellow, red. So choosing not to take the lock using Zam's ability to not trigger the false transponder codes yet. It is it is a may. The lock part is a may, but did take the charge. One hit. Ooh. And that's going to do a damage. First shield there. And you should thank me triggers an additional time. He is going to go ahead and use the Zam lock there to trigger false transponder codes, clearing the focus with the jam. Zam does have full charges. And now after and now C Zam, yeah. Go ahead. Is it, now she has her action. Mm -hmm. Which she can use to boost away. She saw the, um, the ranges. She knows how many shots are likely coming in. Right now she seems to be in the range for three of them. And choosing to boost, probably out of all but one. Three bank. Looking at that cloud right now. Taking a focus. So that's interesting that he chose to 
boost out. I I almost would have liked to see him stay there and drop thermals. Well, right now he's he's just trading shots with a single ship and likely will end up getting a bonus attack on it. You know, just going going one on one right now. I think Zam wins that. After the target lock, two hits. Ooh, spending that focus result on suppressive gunner. Nice. So take a damage or deplete. Ooh. And making the Inquisitor spend the force and the focus gonna push through a damage. Yeah. That's huge though. Right now what I do is if I'm <clears throat> depleted, I only have a single die, I wouldn't shoot here. Ah, Nicholas. No, but he he's already he already has the Zam thing. Oh, uh, I guess you give him a lock. You, you, you're giving him a lock, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose so. You're right. You're always right, Dion. You know uh, that? False. I mean, not always. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you not hear me yelling that I thought the game was over three times? That wasn't over last time. <laughs> Go back and watch the top 16 match where Dion got a little too excited. It's all over. It's over. No, no. It's over. No. It's over. No. Oh, that was pretty good. <clears throat> all right. So that was a great use of the Inquisitor's foresight there. And also, uh, Zam's ability to get free locks and jam with false transponder codes and even using suppressive gunner to not take any further damage. So both these players really flexing their big brain skills on this on this turn. It's my turn to eat, James. Keep talking. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up, and I'm stalling. <laughs> and I'm stalled. <laughs> so uh, we'll see where these inquisitors go. They they um they don't have the best blue maneuvers to clear that stress. Uh, they have like I would, I would arguably say the best blue maneuver in the one hard, but that's not always the best one. Uh, sometimes that two bank is really helpful in clearing stress, and they don't have the blue maneuver for that. So we'll just I guess we'll just see where these inquisitors choose to go if they choose to go between those two. Uh, debris fields up towards where Django might be, or if they choose to pursue Zam down towards the bottom right side of the board. I think I think the the correct choice is to go towards Django because you don't want to follow a fire spray, especially a fire spray that has four bombs. Yep, and when you're flying in formation, those bombs can be devastating. I mean, going yeah, back we, to we, if if you did not watch the top thirty two game, oh you need goodness. to go back and watch the top thirty two game. Go like it was like forty minutes into the game, and see the most glorious bomb dropping sequence I think that has ever existed here on Gold Squadron Podcast. Like, yeah, d definitely anime levels of explosions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So good. That was a very good, very good way to put it. Whoever said that in the chat earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we saw six V wings earlier, all with thermal detonators, and five of them dropped uh, two detonators for a total of ten thermal detonators, procking on one against one ship. It yep. was bonkers. He was sextuple uh, stressed. I mean, yeah, uh, strained. strained. And, and he uh, took three damage? Three. Uh, four, isn't it? I thought it was four. Did, did, did he take shields and a crit? Yeah, pretty sure. Oh, it was shields and a crit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Maze Rim, that round was sponsored by Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> I, I like the reference there. Oh, man. Now, <clears throat> Nicholas here... Um, is is sticking to his formation, and I, I want to address something that somebody else said earlier. Said Nicholas God, veteran? Question mark. Well, one of the things you know, it is a, it is a what I would co consider a design flaw in the, um, in this tournament series, uh, is the fact that it doesn't take past, uh, it doesn't take historical data into account, but. 
But that's not all. Um, the future, you know, somebody was asking like, hey, I thought I really liked this, uh, this format. Here's the thing. Flight Club Championships are not going anywhere, okay? They're not going anywhere. They are simply making an evolution. Because what will happen in the future, the next time we run these, which they will happen again at all three levels. Oh, Talon Roll looks like Django is uh, is gonna going to come in here pretty soon. Uh, they will essentially use other GSP qualifying events. And follow – because we every player has their own Gold Squadron ID now, we can actually keep track of your progress in events and we can have a yearly Gold Squadron Flight Club Championship and use your performance that year to determine – your placement and still give players of different levels that same experience so ace players will get to play against some of the you know their their colleagues the some of the best players in the world same thing with veterans same thing with uh, with recruit level players we and we'll also be able to uh, keep track of pe players glo growth i'm really excited for that you want to track people's growths always that's the teacher in me. Tracking growth is really important. <laughs> oh man! So someone, someone in the chat says, uh, "Elo rankings win." So I, I think this is the kind of the first step into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. To I don't, I don't know if many people know what Elo rankings are. Uh, it tracks. It's like a, it's like a number, like in your your chest rating score. Uh, able to track like you know how how quote unquote how good you are at a at a particular game, but yeah one of, one of my problems with that though is like it it discourages certain players from playing against other players because it, it if a higher level player loses to a lower one it like lowers your score significantly like it, I, I that that I'm not I'm not a huge huge fan of that I I, I will likely not be implementing that. Yeah. Yeah, and and then there, it also kind of brings into the like, oh, I lost because I was playing against someone with higher elo. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. Yeah. This is why you make the big bucks, Dion. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Could see another bomb drop here from Zam. Mm hmm. <laughs> Somebody said Dion's gonna gonna sell all his data to AMG for a big payout. They they can't even answer an email, man. <laughs> I'm still I'm st I'm gonna try send another one this week. I got spring break. I have a, a, a time to craft a very beautifully worded email, thanking them for all their work and looking forward to working with them and letting me know how I can help you continue to make success. You know, X Wing successful and all this stuff. But... Maze Room in the chat says, uh, Elo can do white talent rolls. Is that the same thing? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Zam did drop a thermal detonator using the two straight there. That is the second bomb drop. All right. Uh, so all these Tybee ones looking like they're going to do a little shimmy to the left. No, I, I, I would not have raided them. I know people people really wanted me to raid AMG stream yesterday, but uh, I got I got my hand slapped pretty hard by FFG for doing that. <laughs> and, and and that is that I got I got permission. I got permission for the person in charge. I, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. I, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. Matt Holland, all right? You, sir, I love your face. He told me, Oh yeah, you could raid the Twitch stream. And then Alex Watkins was like, What the hell, Dion? <laughs> uh, after i did it so the, you know the, the, he was my contact love you matt but mm, threw me under the bus on that one Ooh, ah. yeah not not no no rating amg yeah i mean i mean we kind of talked about it a little bit yesterday but like these guys are brand new to the star wars x-wing ip mm. so Give them a little break if they're still learning the game while they're trying to teach it. 
And I mean, I, I think these these AMG streams have been great so far. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're doing they're doing a great job. And to answer some questions, some people are asking like, why why was the raid considered a bad thing? Basically, they couldn't ha they couldn't chat man they the FFG commentators at the time. Right, they they're not Twitch streamers. They they don't understand how to handle a chat, how to communicate there. Uh, so they were they were struggling with being able to uh, to. They, they felt like it was hampering their experience as commentators. So that's why they didn't like it. And yeah, and so, they didn't have Twitch mods either. Yeah. Yeah. So using that suppressive gunner again. And mm -hmm. forcing the green uh, Ty V1 to take a deplete. As those those depletes on these two attack die ships are really powerful. Obviously, yeah, bringing, like, yep, <laughs> yeah, pu pushing, pushing, pushing damage. Ooh, and he's choosing not to attack. This is the correct mm. choice. This is the correct choice. Why would you take on that bonus attack? You know it's yeah. you better mean business down there. You know it. <laughs> and he, and he, he better mean business before he goes down to attack. That's right. Uh, I don't think he meant business. Mm -mm. You know? He did not. Uh, so to continue right. answering some of the questions <clears throat> here, it's you know people are saying that you know, it sounds like they weren't prepared. I mean, yeah, I, I think it was a, a miscommunication on their part. You know, it didn't didn't get translated, and I th I don't think they actually understood what a Twitch raid was. Um, so that was one of the issues. Uh, somebody also asked Chase if AMG came to you and said they want you to help them, want you to helm OP. Um, I, I I say this with the most amount of respect. And love, I don't think I I wouldn't supplant like my wife has a fantastic job. Like I would not supplant my family for them. All right. So I wouldn't I wouldn't move my family and I would debate whether or not they could afford me. And I say that I say that respectfully, but it's just a, just a reality. Like it, it would need to it would need to be a pretty significant number because the reality is that that job would come with, oh, by the way, you can't do X, Y and Z with Gold Squadron. And I'll be like, uh, no, well. Sorry. Yeah, I don't. I don't think when when you say they can't afford me as as in money wise, I, you're also saying like they can't afford me because you love GSP too much. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's all it's all <clears throat> within the same thing. Like the the amount of money they would have to offer me to just like step away from all all that I'm doing with GSP because the reality is they wouldn't just be like, oh, you can't do this with GSP. The reality is like, oh no, GSP's gone. It's done. I'm like, oh well, mm, no, nah, I'll I'll pass on this job. Thank you. But I'm hoping whoever, whoever, uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that whoever ends up with that job, uh, you know, is excited about it. And I'm sure, I'm sure they'll, they'll have somebody great. And I'm looking forward to meeting that person and talking with them and, and trading some ideas. I got to, I got to talk quite a, you know, a little bit with Alex Watkins, with Zach Rayburn beforehand, swap some ideas and we'll, we'll see what we get. Looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah. No, no more isofane sugar daddy. That's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's true. <laughs> GSP presented by AMG, maybe? Mm, well, maybe. If, uh, we'll see. I just want to have a conversation. Uh, just like, let me be a part. Let me, let me, me. let me help you. Let me help you. I don't want so their money. That, I just want their time. That Yellow Inquisitor. Uh, coming in with a three bank and not hitting that debris cloud. Very well maneuvered. Very well maneuvered. Mm -hmm. Setting up a possible bullseye. I like it. Yeah, with Jan <clears throat> with Django uh, probably zooming in here. Yeah, I, th I think I think Django is going to be hard pressed to not take a ton of uh, foresights here. Mm, I feel like this is an attempt to block the four straight boost. That Inquisitor yeah. coming forward there. Yeah. Mm, that clear he's stress. considering yeah he's considering doing a boost here to get that range one because we can see fire sprays you really need three dice to push through damage yep because those two dice especially on for for uh, for some reason on fire spray are like two and a half somehow it's like two <laughs> and a half dice because i mean we've seen x-wings like they have two defense dice 
and they don't survive forever. Well, so why do these guys? These guys have have more defensive tools. They got treacherous, right? They got things like treacherous. Ooh. They got uh, they can they usually have the points for hull upgrade. They're just so much chunkier. They got false transponder codes, ripping away modifications. They just have so many more tools. Where that uh, that two agility just it it takes a long walk with you, much longer than uh, than the X wings. Yeah, I forgot about Treacherous here. I wonder if um, Nicholas God forgot about Treacherous because uh, his formation flying is the exact kind of stuff that these two fire sprays like to see to set up those Treacherous. All right. <laughs> so if we see a one bank here from Django, we could see one or maybe two. Or sight triggers. Yeah, this is going to be an. This is going to be, I think, the tone setting turned because depending on how many of the four sights hit, how many of these ships can the fire sprays take out? Will Zam get an action this turn? That'll be massive. Can any ships be initiative killed? Mm. Ships can always be initiative killed. <clears throat> And Isophane saying, I'm only a small part of GSP financials. Patreon does a lot. Okay, Isophane. I see you. <laughs> All right, Zam. Oh, my goodness. She made that turn. She made that turn. And uh, looks like her, her and Django are going to have a tactical strike. And look, I called it the four straight. Nicholas God knew it was coming. Django trying to get out of dodge. No, oh, no, no. I don't I don't know if I would foresight here. Uh cause all you're gonna do is put a strain on blue. Ah, uh, this is true. Tre treacherous is active. One squiggle, trigger treacherous, give a strain on blue, and that completely mitigates the attack. Yeah. Uh yeah, I think you might have. You know what though? You you had to trigger it at some point. Like it's gonna happen. You gotta clear the charge. Yeah. You I guess you do force him to use the treacherous. But he has taken one shield. He chose not uh spend the force. Mm. He did take the shield? Mm. Are you sure? Okay, oh there's the there's the force. Okay, cool. All good, all good, all good. So treacherous did get used. Yeah, and the force, which is important. I was just making sure one or the other got spent there. <clears throat> and here's the range one shot. Zam looking into that strained blue inquisitor, meaning it's only going to have two agility dice. And Zam only gets one natural on the roll. Mm. Does have a focus out there to modify it to three. And is going to go ahead and do it. Here we go. And blank Ooh. out. Going to be man. left at one hole, James. Oh, that's that's rough. All right. So what do you think is in the box of Zam's card? Oh, it's you better mean business. It's it, I, I guarantee it. So that means it's probably not going to trigger this round. Correct. Unless, unless you know, uh, uh, Ernie busts a, a rope and dope, dope, you know, and and goes big brain like nobody's going to shoot me. It's fine, and then busts out that you should thank me and gets a bonus attack anyway. Yeah. So I don't know if you noticed, Dion, that was a foresight usage during the activation phase. Mm-hmm. Being able to strip a range three die and gives you that free modification as well oh yeah free F free is good <laughs> and spending there for two hits and natties with zam Ooh. we'll go ahead and get the uh the card trigger here what's the zam card it is the you better mean business so no mm. trigger here as the green inquisitor is out of zam's arc it's very important that he was able to get that attack off because if he wasn't able to, Zam would have been able to shoot someone else. Like probably, probably blue and kill him. Ooh. 
Ooh, pushing through another damage on Django. Planking away. Now, this is what you got to do with these fire sprays. To stay consistent, shots on target. And that, that's why we have uh, a lot of popular – like five ships seems to be the uh, – that that money number right now we had was it James was it you who busted out the the stats on me for the number of ships like the uh, uh, the breakdown or was that Jonah I, I, I don't remember who I, it was not not this event it was Ryan it was Ryan oh, ah yeah. yes Mastana Zuski he said he said four ship is the highest rate yep so yeah I mean, it's they're very good against these fire sprays because you just want to continue to have consistent shots on target. And if you are good at blocking, like really the reason you got those three shields was because of the yellow Inquisitor. If he had kept the yellow Inquisitor where he was before, Django would have four straight. It would have been a little bit farther forward than he is now, plus a boost and maybe had been shot once from range. Maybe three. once. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, using these Inquisitors as uh, blocking is really, really important. Um, hmm, I don't know where Yellow is going to go here, though. Because you don't want to zoom past Django because he's going to drop some bombs. And as we hang out here in our top eight match, I want to remind you that all of our matches this weekend are brought to you by Curled Paw Creatives. Use that coupon code VETERAN21 for 21% off. And that same coupon code is good at District Foundry, the sponsor for our giveaways. Awesome 3D printed designs, token trays, tokens. Check out their new magnetic arc indicators pretty cool design there from uh district foundry dion morales uses a district foundry tournament box and maybe you can too i will tell you we have some uh some of those awesome tournament boxes are going to be part of the uh, galactic championship swag uh, so looking forward to that is the coupon good on thursday are you kidding come on don't don't stretch the meme don't stretch the meme. It's not good on Tuesday. It's good till Monday. <laughs> like, no, we got to bring it. Is the meme, is it, is it good next Monday? Is going to be the final form. Or next Tuesday? Would next Tuesday be the final form of the meme? I don't know. We'll find out. Also, for some other GSP behind the scenes stuff right now, we are in we are in production. We are in production of Gold Squadron Paint Wars, a uh, a weekly episodic um, episodic painting competition that's going to be happening. Three painters per episode duking it out in a painting challenge. A different ship every week. A different prompt every week. Should be fun. We're hoping to uh, get it released sometime in May is the goal. So looking forward to that. There's a lot. There's a lot that goes into uh, into a show like this. I mean, like most think think about like TV TV production. It's essentially what it is. Just on a on a, on a smaller scale, we uh, we had to get our our quote unquote actors first. We then uh, well first we had to just like plan it. Like how is this gonna work? We get our competitors. We got them materials. We got to get their video. We got to edit it together. We got to get the judges together. All kinds of stuff. I have lots of updates on that for you tomorrow. Mm hmm. Yep. And, and what the biggest wild card uh, is uh, is shipping. Shipping things around the world is a wild card, especially to our friends in Europe. Um, I had I had a suggestion with uh, with somebody who I was <laughs> who uh, I had pitched the idea to originally there. Why don't you just do the U.S.? It'd be easier. I'm like, yeah, you're right. It would be easier. But I got to include our, our worldwide fam, though. We do have to just deal with shipping delays. It's just the truth. I'm just hoping that things don't get lost. That's when when it's like, oh, we can't do anything about that. Do we have a catchphrase yet? No, no catchphrase yet. All right.
Friday. These Inquisitors are moving around the table here, trying to catch Django in a trap. Django did drop a thermal detonator during the system phase in anticipation of trying, trying to see if he can clip some of these Inquisitors. Now, a couple of people in the chat asking, uh, basically, you know, in-person meta versus online meta. You know, I this idea, I will tell you, this idea of, like, competitive players won't buy six copies of a ship or five copies of a ship, I think is a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not true. It's it's a misrepresentation. I would say that your casual player won't do that. Okay. You your might say it's a fallacy. That's the word I was looking for. I think it's a fallacy. Sure. Uh, your casual player probably doesn't do it, but uh, your competitive players, the players who look at this as like this is their uh, their com competitive scene, they will they will do it. And I'll tell you, it's cheaper. It's cheaper than uh, than if your competitive uh, scene is like Magic or something like that, some type of like trading card game where you're paying you know potentially hundreds of dollars for a specific card or something like that. And it's uh, no, you just you could uh, you know pay the money for the list that you want to fly and, and you go for it. And then that's not even to say that people do share ships. Like w when I say like how's your squad, when I talk about people's squad, like if you're from a store and you want a squad to play, like I've had for instance Marcel, those those five A wings that Marcel slapped me around with for such a long time, those were my own A wings. Okay, I'll have you know they were mine. I didn't didn't even get to fly with him. He's just like, hey, give me the A-wings. I'm like, the okay, here you go. Of disrespect. <laughs> All right. Well, one attack on this first attack and able to uh, to save the damage there. Here we go. Zam attacking now. Going range one into the red, red Inquisitor. Oh no. Not a, not a lot of good out uh, damage output coming from these fire sprays. Mm -mm. Not yet. Yeah, the, the longer that these inquisitors uh, don't take damage consistently, you know, the the longer they're going to be staying around. That is a John Madden special for you right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> range two coming into Django, uh, one hit. One evade. There it is. We might see a uh, Dooku trigger here. This is He's true. He's looking at it. He's looking at it. Ooh. And he calls. He uh, That's three hits. Does he call for the evade? No. No. Nope. Uh, he he, he it, held it on to the force. He held on to the force and only takes one there. So Django is what? Down to a, a single shield after all that? No. Shields no. are down. Shields, shields down. down. He still needs... Two more damage to get half, though, because of those annoying hull upgrades. But uh, those Inquisitors are going to have a hard time not taking... At least Blue and Pink are going to have a hard time avoiding the bombs coming out of Jingo. Uh, those thermal detonators. James, I wasn't going to tell him about the hull upgrades. I wanted Fun Walk to be able to, you know. Uh, <laughs> I support yeah, Fun Walk and his clip, uh, his clip Empire. business. <laughs> <laughs> Fun Walk, king of clips. Yeah, someone got me. Someone got one of me yesterday saying on Stinky, and then someone also got the uh, the Goji no bombs clip. Mm-hmm. I think I think I still have it. That was a pretty good one. Yes, yes. So with the whole upgrade, these thick fire spray sitting at eleven health total, meaning that if you wanted half points, you got to do a total of six damage. So that would be four shields and not one, but two damage cards, and then you have not the three? half points. No, not three. Don't confuse me. <laughs> what if he also had a shield upgrade? Fight me. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> Dan says, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. done. I'm done. 
Uh, we might see a block attempt here by the Red Inquisitor on Django. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That one game where Han had a hull upgrade, shield upgrade, and R two D two, so he just kept regenning. Uh, oh my gosh, that was that was so funny. Man, I remember my first big event was at the System Open twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, the one where Jack Mooney uh, styled on some kids with the Jake Han build mm -hmm. uh, that basically forced <laughs> Han to get nerfed. Yep. The Jack Mooney nerf. Yeah, the Jack Mooney nerf, as it's <laughs> colloquially in call, uh, referred to. <clears throat> yeah, R2-D2 and Kanan were, were pretty good. Combos, they good. Yeah, it was R two D two Kanan, and then what was the other uh, one that was inertial dampeners? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that little combo. Gross. Like a hundred and twenty points <laughs> on solo. I'm sorry. I have to read. I have to read this text from my wife. She says, "Your daughter is crazy today." She just tried to eat my arm and then gave me some side eye as she as she slowly closed the bathroom door. Very random today. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like my daughter. <laughs> you, yeah, it's never my daughter unless they do something uh, good, right? Right, 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 right. It's your daughter when they're being bad. Uh huh. Uh, she's silly. She's silly, just like me. All right. So this pink inquisitor in the corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner unless <clears throat> you want to be. Now that might just be outside of range one. Mm, I think it's close. I think it's close. Bye bye, baby. Uh, red not going for the block. Instead, looking for the foresight trigger. Pesito. What's better than getting a block is uh, getting free damage. Free damage, good damage. Yeah. Yeah, those Inquisitors are about to take some pain for sure. Yeah, I think Blue is uh, stuck between a Zam and a Django bomb there. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to take two or do you want to take one? It's up to you. Random Rick asking, what's the best singular ship slash pilot right now? Um, I would say, uh, like one, one. one on one on one. That's, ah, that's, I mean, it might be between what we're seeing on the table right now. Yeah. The, <laughs> or just like, I would say looking at it. I would the first thing that w jumped into my head was, uh, was Zam, Zam Firespace specifically is, is pretty fantastic. Um, at least this week, well, it might be Vader next week, Vader and the defender. No. 4K and dunking on people. I have you now. Oh my goodness. So much. So much. All right. Yeah. I would like to see your clarification on the question because if you're talking about like what is the best ship right now, mm -hmm. I would probably say Tie V1. But if you're saying what's the best 1v1 ship, like 1v1 me, bro, I would probably say like people in the chat saying Ky Kylo. That's a, yeah, that's, that's that's a pretty good, good guess. Yep. Ooh. Oh, all right. His little fire, fire spray, his little side by side action. Doing a little do si do. Looks like he will get a force side trigger if he wants to use it. He may choose to keep it for defense. We'll add another fire spray to the screen. There you go. <laughs> Here we go. Two dice and just one hit. He's fine. All right. And the action coming out of Django here. Going to go ahead and take a target lock. He's got a range one shot. <clears throat> plus what was the force. The maneuver on blue or on, on red. Two straight. Okay. It's blue. And here we go. Oh. Calling a crit. 
This is a this is a Count Dooku kill here that's, on the Inquisitor. That's right, and, <laughs> and you're dead. <laughs> Don't even worry about rolling it. Just just die. Treacherous does trigger there, regenerating Ooh. one of the, uh, the the charge on Treacherous. Here is another thermal detonator going off. Going to hit pink, and that's <laughs> a damage. That's a shield. Yeah. Django showing off his ability to uh, use that Dooku and just kill a ship with a bomb. Yeah, went out the box. Ooh, and that's, that's a hits. full string, four hits. Here we go. Here's the roll. Oh. Um, mm. I think you I think you spend. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he did. Takes one on the red inquisitor. You want to try to hold on to those half points if you can. Here's the range one coming in from Zam. This is a naked dice. And all right, got the average. Hit crit. Oh. Is he in? He is in. It's a slave one trigger. While you perform a front arc attack, if you are in the defender's rear arc, you may change one hit to a crit result. And he is in the rear arc. He's he's actually flanking. Mm-hmm. Man, so this this red inquisitor needs to uh, needs to roll dice now. We'll see if it matters. Oh, and he's also using the suppressive gunner. Oh my goodness! Got two squiggles though. So ends up with the deplete with the suppressive gunner. I mean, right now it feels like the fire sprays are are starting to gain a little bit of momentum. But let's see what the inquisitors can do to these fire sprays. Okay, one hit and a focus. Oh no, he could have used foresight there. Oh, he depleted, damage, so it would, have, it would have only been one die. Yeah, so he just took the, the range one shot. Oh, okay. He did it on Zam, actually. Wait, hold on. That's not the right card. What? Okay, no, this is, he did attack Django. Okay. He did Django. He did Django. Okay. Sorry. I just saw the card flip. So this is a a, a, a You should thank of, me bonus attack. You should thank me. Yep, at the end of the round. <clears throat> and that's because the Red Inquisitor just barely had um Zam in the uh in the front arc. Now hold on one second. Now we gotta check. Uh I believe the red should be down one uh Yeah, I he he should have taken damage earlier. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, I I did notice that as well. Yeah. We wanted to give him a second to finish. There's a, there's a lot going on in that engagement. So we're just like, all right, it hasn't been flipped yet. We'll wait. Yep, and it is resolved now. Cece's upset because Arwen and Devin are not home anymore. She's barking outside my door. Come on, snuggle puppy. Come on. Relax. Come here. Come on. No. So looking at it, I think no, there's no way. There's no way that Red Inquisitor fits in between Django and Zam, right? <laughs> One bank and uh, and shimmy on up. Oh yeah, mm, I, it's close. Uh, I, I, you know what? Do it. <laughs> I, I I've seen I've seen worse. <laughs> <clears throat> I think it fits. Yeah, I think it might actually. 
What do you think, chat? Fit or no fit? Stake your claim now. Choose your team. Does the one bank fit? Oh, man, I've seen lots of fits. There's a lot of people think it's a fit. What is the angle? Like the literal angle? It's that, I believe they're just 45. It's, it's five. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you want from me? <laughs> Get your get your protractor out and let me know what the angle is. <laughs> They're at a perfect ninety and forty five. Yeah, there there's been no uh, angle bumps yet. Uh, but I I think what they want is the GSP Patreon camera. All right, let's go to it. Excuse me, CC. I'm sorry. We have to end the snuggle party for a second. Here we go. There's the view. I I think that fits, man. I really, really do. All day. Well, we're going to see the last bomb out of Jingo. No bombs from Zam. Oh, he says, I'm not taking any maybes. I'm taking the sure thing. <laughs> Took the three turn. Could end up blocking Jingo here. Uh, yeah, I, oh, man. This could, okay, no, 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 Django's not close enough, okay. No, he's not close enough like, to the board to be bumped off. Uh, okay, because I have definitely done that to, Bo like, full health Boba Fett's. Like, I've forced him close to the board edge, and then, like... Yeah. Bank would fit. Say it again? <laughs> Someone <laughs> just ran it. Who, who was it? It said the Baron. I don't, who is that? Oh, that's Darren Granger. <laughs> <laughs> what did he even say? I think did anybody I, get that? It chat? was either the one bank would fit or wouldn't, and I'm not sure which one it was. But hi, Darren. <laughs> All righty. So this Inquisitor... Uh, room, the one bank would have fit. Oh, it would have fit. All right, cool. I agree. Uh, I agree. <laughs> I'm skeptical. <laughs> and, and I understand that. All righty. And these, these Inquisitors creeping up here, ready to receive Zam in their loving arms. Like, listen, you're not a force... You're not a force uh, user. I don't gotta. I don't gotta kill you. But if I have to, if you're in my way, we will fight. Ooh, I think it's just out of foresight for Green. I agree. Somebody says if Django won hard, it could be a problem. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's close. Uh, let me here. I, I know what you, you guys really need. You need this view. All right. There it is right there. You see? He's he's safe. Yeah, there, right. there's there's no way that he... Oh, he tried to Talon roll, though. Oh! <laughs> he's trying all the spots. He's trying all <laughs> the spots. Uh, yeah, all I don't right. think there's any way that he goes off the board just because of, like, the way that when you turn, you... Yeah, I don't think there's any way. All right, what do we get? Oh, man. Thermal detonators are going to end up hitting Zam and the Pink Inquisitor. Pink Inquisitor is one away from half points. <clears throat> oh, he rolled a blink outside the box. Oh, feels bad. Uh, Got him. Yep. <laughs> and that's a damage on Zam. Punished. Oh, Count Dooku trigger he, he here. Just, he just said, a crit. Count Dooku, that's a crit. Take a damage. Half points. <laughs> Give them to me. Give them to me. And may be able to uh, initiative kill it if you get some good rolls here. No. Not today. One hit, one evade. Now Zam is up, gonna be targeting 
Right, who do we think? Probably green is about to be half. Yeah, green. You only need one hit there to get half points. Ooh. I think you saved the focus. No, oh, he's, 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 he's going hard, man. He's got the lock. Ooh, decisions now. Yeah, holding on to the focus, I think, is the correct choice here for oh, defense. I mean, like, he has another use for that. He can just use suppressive gunner. So that's what he'll do. He, he'll use suppressive gunner to either force him to take a damage, which would be half points, or take a deplete. <gasps> Ooh, he's hovering over that shield. He's thinking All about right. it. <laughs> he chooses the deplete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And ends up like, avoiding the damage there. I was like, there's no way he took the shield here. Mm -mm. <clears throat> now, do not shoot at Zam here. Uh, violence, question mark? He only has one die. He's only got one die. Nicholas God, don't take away, does not refuse to shoot. All right. So spend in Zam's last two triggers, or last two charges, sorry. To perform a bonus attack against the, his attacker. And only a single hit on this one. <clears throat> Kept the focus from earlier. Enough. Enough. So the bonus attacks, uh, the last couple turns have not netted him much. We'll see what happens on this next attack. No threats here. Zam still has a focus for defense. That's going to be two hits after spending the focus. Spend the focus, avoid the damage. Right now, Nicholas has just not been able to get the train rolling on this damage. He's he's creeping on the half points, but not quite there. Only one hit. Does this one have a target lock? It looks Ooh. like it might. It does, but no. That, not to that says it. Red Inquisitor on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, yeah, you were right. Yeah. I think Pink's lock is on Zam. <clears throat> oh boy. Go lay down. Go. Go. Good girl. She's calm now. <laughs> so with the way that these inquisitors fly, they're always stressing themselves. They're always, you know, boosting or barreling to get that uh to get that better position. So they're always doing those blue maneuvers. Mm -hmm. Um which is really not Great. That's not what Django wants to see. Django wants to see people doing those white maneuvers or those red maneuvers yep. uh, because of his ability. That, that, he can, that uh, reads, while you defend or perform a primary attack, if the difficulty of your, meaning Django, revealed maneuver is less than that of the enemy ship, you may change one enemy ship's focus results to a blank. So we, we actually haven't seen it trigger very much. Uh, but when it does, it can be extremely, extremely effective. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I mean, Django was kind of not a Jedi hunter, but his, uh, his ability works really good against Jedi because, you know, they're usually doing those hard turns, those white maneuvers. Mm -hmm. And if Django does a blue maneuver, he'll able, he's able to change, like, for example, change one of their defense die that rolls a focus into a blank. Which could be massive for a low health, um, like Ada Actus fighter. Oh yeah. Um, as for the bomb count, there is only a single bomb left, and that is one left in the chamber on Zam. Django is plumb out of those thermal detonators. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I, I love think being Tyrannus definitely made sure that he picked someone who could kill Jedi for the clone template. So. I think Django definitely killed some Jedi in his day. Hmm. Some good, yeah, uh, and, some and good then, theorizing like, there. <clears throat> and with the new stuff we have out from the Mandalorian, we found out that Django was canonically a actually a Mandalorian, a foundling. Mm hmm. So, uh, and found or and Mandalorians in the past, in you know, in the Star Wars past. Uh, did have um, dealings with the Jedi. That's that exactly that's of, exactly the word the, I was going to say. <laughs> of the of the you know best. Uh, how, how do I see this? They don't like each other a lot. 
<laughs> not a fan. Not a fan. He doesn't like you. I don't like you. <laughs> <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. And so here is Zam going to go ahead and drop that thermal detonator. The final one, trying to trying to get pink down to a single hull. And, I mean, with uh, with Dooku around there, that's not that hard to do. Here's another block attempt with red taking the squiggle. Oh, pink Inquisitor going to the left side. I think this is an attempt to try to catch Django if he tries to duck out to the left. But if he's within range two, uh, Dooku's gonna gonna crit on you. Crit on him. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't mean that to rhyme. Sorry, that's not on purpose. <laughs> 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 Oops. All righty. Yeah, Brett in this in the chat. Django did fight Obi Wan to a stalemate. Before he ran away like a, a scaredy cat. No, no, no. Tactical <laughs> retreat. Tactical, Tactical retreat. retreat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did hold his own, to be fair, against a Jedi, like a Jedi Master. Jedi Master. Also, Talap points out he did kill Coleman Traber in the Geonosis Arena. Um. So he is a Jedi nice killer, one. right? <laughs> I just love the the meme from that one. <laughs> like he jumps up there, Django shoots him, and Count Dooku's like, "Was that a dinosaur?" <laughs> <laughs> and Zam does get blocked here, but unfortunately for Niklas, there's nothing he can really he can't really take advantage of that. He's just he's reducing the action efficiency of Zam for sure. But uh, with the thermal detonator there and um, and no shots. I mean, Zam's still going to have a, a range one shot potentially out the back. Django Fett still within range two of the Pink Inquisitor. I'm guessing he just calls crit on the guaranteed damage is good. Yeah, he's, Django still has an action here. So I think he's just trying to decide what, mm -hmm. uh, what he wants to do. He could just take a little lock on the Red Inquisitor. Maybe a focus, because he's getting shot a couple times. Oh, man. Yeah, I think you do a crit here. Yep, 100%. Ooh. Nah, just... Just take a face up. Crit. There it is. Let's see. Find out what it is. Blinded, Blinded pilot. pilot. Well, I mean, they Ooh. have force. It's all right. Yeah. And Zam takes a strain, but again, there's no, no really, in actuality, no consequences. And here's a range one shot. Django into the Red Inquisitor. Red did a blue maneuver. Oh! Ooh. Well, you're taking at least one. You know you're giving up half points. Half points plus what? Spend the force, spend the evade, and the shield gives half points. Oh, man, that force evade. Super good, but I mean, er Ernest is still adding to his total 0 to 80 right now. And here's Zam. Zam might be able to add another uh, another 20 points right here with the range 1 attack into pink. So no mods. Mm. Uh, only one. Maybe not. The oh, but he can use suppressive gunner. Oh, that's so annoying. Suppressive gunner. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> taking unmodded shots? Uh, suppressive gunner, why not? Uh, has to spend the focus here, but he might as well. Oh, he, it's only one. Never mind, sorry. <clears throat> Disregard. And here's the range three. Two hits. Uh -huh. 
So he'll probably just use Treacherous here to give yellow or pink a strain. Mm hmm. And no damage. So good. Treacherous, so good. Two points. Uh, bye, bye, bye. And the range two shot from this Inquisitor into the Red Fire Spray. Django Fett receiving one <clears throat> hit. Oh! That, that, uh, that Inquisitor did a five white straight. Django using his ability to turn that focus to a blink. Beautiful, beautiful use of the ability. And remembering is half the battle there, especially so far yeah. into the engagement I like, phase. I was like, what is he doing? What is that even... <laughs> Man, yeah. Now, there's an interesting debate going on in the chat right now about who was the quote-unquote worst Jedi. And I guess my, my first question is, before I can even answer this question, is I need, I need qualifications as to worst. Are we talking about following the Jedi code? Are we talking about skill with a lightsaber? Are we talking about uh, knowledge? Are we talking about power? Um... <laughs> And uh, D, uh, you know, did say it earlier. Yoda, Yoda, Yoda uh, Obi Wan, Luke, all three of them. You know, like the three, you know, debated like, oh, these are some of the most powerful Jedi masters. Uh, you know, they all trained Sith lords. <laughs> you know, people who end up being pretty strong with the dark side. So that's cool. But yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, Progma in the chat. Someone, you are by far the worst Jedi I've ever heard of, but you've heard of me. Um, some people, all right. So as a teacher, Obi is the worst. Yeah, Obi was not a not a not a great teacher to Anakin. It's 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 documented, right? Um, not good with attachments. I mean, yeah, Quinlan Vos. That's that's a dark one. I don't think Anakin was a good student. Let's start there. Uh, uh, I, I think Obi Wan tried his hardest, but uh, really Qui Gon was the one meant to train him. This is true. I mean, at least Ki Adi Mundi cared about the joint attacks on the Wookiees ah, <laughs> from <okay>. retro leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Rocker Cocker, very good point. I was thinking the same thing. I just didn't want to say it. Obi was barely out of being a Padawan himself. Like, he took Anakin on as a Padawan before he even took his trials. Yep. He's like, I, he's like, I know I'm not quite done, but I'll have a student. Blame the council. It's always their fault. I mean, yeah. Blame the leadership. <laughs> Oh, you know, it, and this is this is that depth of Star Wars, right? It's is the the reality is that the Jedi were flawed, right? Oh yeah, is 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 the reality, and so are the Sith. Like neither of them are right, right? It's it's about being balanced. Speaking of the balance of the Force, uh, right now that advantage is really swinging hard Ernie's way. Nicholas not taking his foot off the gas here. He's trying to line up shots with both pink and yellow onto Django. That is Nicholas's uh, quickest path to try to get points quickly because if he does get uh, Django, that's going to get him, what would that be, 51, 51 points, I believe. In the bank. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. So just slowly, slowly trying to tick forward. <clears throat> and if you can get a bear roll, here. if you can get both Gray. of these fire sprays to half, then that if assuming he doesn't lose anything else, he could actually be in the lead. Ooh. But the point here is uh, if if they. If he loses another half on a Inquisitor and he gets half on both the fire sprays, it'll be a hundred to hundred. Mm-hmm. T roll. Zam <laughs> flipping it around. One Ooh. straight. I think he avoids the foresights and ends uh, up with a range green, one shot. Green will get him. 
Oh, he sure does. Okay, there it is. But there are going to be three shots coming at him, so we'll see how that ended up shaking out. Two hits on the foresight. Here's the roll. And that's going to be a damage. Needs one um, more card for half. <clears throat> we may see a boost here from Django. This is true, yes. We have not gotten Django's action quite yet. Although we could just see him slap down another focus. And, yep, that's the call. Takes a focus token. All right. With how uh, things are positioned here, Django can, if he gets, um, if he gets three to four hits on red, he can call. He can, he can Duku a blank and mm -hmm. force him, force red to uh, die because he has to have a blank showing. Decisions, decisions. I mean, I think range one is the the call there. Uh, but he could double up his shots onto green. That's right. One away from half there. And those are four dice pooled. Oh man! And he's gonna spend it choosing violence here. Three <clears throat> hits and a crit. Yeah, he can Duku a crit. He can Duku a blank here if he's. Or just oh, or just, just don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Red Inquisitor taken off the board. <clears throat> don't need to Dooku when your opponent rolls like trash. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, and now that, that card is still available for defense. Yeah, and he got treacherous back. Mm hmm. Here's Sam going range two at the Green Inquisitor. Three hits. Unmodded. Yeah, I think uh, the writing's on the wall in this one. Slowly starting to slip away from Nicholas. Seven minutes left on the clock. Takes a um, damage. I think you're going to take... I think you just take the both cards. Because you're already going to take half. She has shield on a card? Yeah. Because you're already going to take half. You need to do something here to Django. Oh, actually, no, you can spend the focus and then use Foresight. This tr true that. Decision, decisions, decisions. Oh, but the foresight gives a treacherous trigger. Good call there. Uh, at uh, least logically, no, it'll it'll still be good. Because closest to closest is still on the right side of that bullseye, but it is very close. You're right. Has a focus token, so probably just going to go with the primary here. Uh, the 8 bit deity, you don't need to have the force to use the foresight attack during the engagement phase. Mm -hmm. The uh, the, fo the force is only to trigger the after executing maneuver part. Uh, so rolling that back, he is going to spend the focus, so he should uh, not have any cards on green. All right. So just a shield. Gonna keep the foresight. And it says oh, well it won't say if it's obstructed or not, but it is not. One hit. Foresight does not end up mattering. It would have been the same either way. But he at least got to save the shield. Range one shot now. Going into Django. Three dice. Oh man! Spends for three. This this is it right here. You got half points, guaranteed. Yeah. Two cards. There's half points. And here's the other range three shot. Oh, two Ooh. crits. He made Dooku innovate here. I hope nope. so. He just uses the force. All righty. Still takes a crit. And is that a fuel Ooh. leak? No, it's a hole breach. breach. Every card is face up from now on until that gets cleared. Hole breach on to Django. Okay, so what are our points at now? 
We are at uh, as soon. Uh, we got to update the health. We got Django down to three hull. As soon as that, you'll see it pop up. It should be 51 to 120. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's only four minutes left. Even if he kills Django, he still has to half Sam, which is going to be another four damage. Yep. Which is just not possible without losing more of a, like losing half on yellow, you know? All righty. Uh, G Wink. Surprisingly, it's very enjoyable this to play. I mean, it's 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 good. We know meta stuff is going to get seen out there. It's you know, you, you got to be able to watch. Um, you know, you got to be able to learn from people playing this uh, these meta squads, right? That's one of the reasons why we record them. Um, is uh, is to make sure that there's information out there for you guys. I also had somebody ask, do I think they're going to be updating points for other things when they release points this Monday for the upcoming wave? And I believe the answer to that is no. Um, I expect just the point, you know, it's the, historically the point updates have been separate. Like the, the other things have been separate from um, the uh, wave updates. So I would not expect that. Nice 4K. Ooh, did not there. Ooh, all right. Ah, that's really close, though. Where can we find the update? Uh, the points will likely still be posted on the FFG website until AMG. AMG is, is building out their, their website infrastructure. Um, at least that's what we believe right now because it's, it's going to eventually need to be on their site. Or it will end up on a generic like Asmodi site, which I wouldn't be surprised if they do that with their product. It's just kind of centralize the information. But we'll end up seeing here the Inquisitors trying to shimmy around. I'm trying to guess where Django is going to be. I'm just going to slap a target lock on somebody in order to set up a modified attack. Checking what she's got. She's got them all. She's got everything. I mean, yeah, with a minute 20 left, uh, it is impossible for Nicholas to win. Like James stated earlier, he'd need to kill Django and get half points on Zam. And that's, that's just not going to happen, friends. I believe our event timer should be pretty close to wrapping up here. It's actually almost the exact same time. All right, two hits and a crit. Looking at that range and one shot. Django is going to be online for this. Okay, doesn't matter. Boom, boom. Pink Inquisitor taken off the board. <clears throat> it's over. It's all over. Hit crit. The two hits and a crit. Laid out there. And, Whoa. oh, with the blank out, that is a... And green's gone, too. <laughs> a glorious way to explode. Oh, man. Great great game to Ernestus Romanescus uh, with the Django Zam. Once again, proving it an uh, incredible, incredible list. Let him know. And Nicholas calls it there. Good game. Thank you to both Nicholas God and Ernestus Romanowskis.